Want to come closer to the cam? <laughs> Back out there. Woo! Uh, a little closer. The glove to the camera. That's a little too close, though. No! Making no. love to the camera? Oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's a little that. personally too close to the camera, yeah. but... Yeah. Um... Yeah, you're good. <laughs> Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Oak and Lily Study Group at its uh, same bat time, uh, same bat channel, different day. Uh, on Mondays now, and tonight's topic is when old meets new. Seems very appropriate for the new year. Hope nobody partied too hard this new year. I didn't. But when old ideas meet new ones, when old ideas meet new technology as well, um, we're all sort of people of the digital age, as evidenced by this very study group. Um, I've seen some interesting ideas of adapting technology into pagan practice. One of the where interesting ones I heard was when uh, somebody actually used a laser pointer as their athame, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, another thing I've seen uh, popping up and gaining momentum recently has been the plethora of uh, chat room rituals or online rituals, be it either through a video feed or a radio or just typing uh, response, call and response into chat. Any commentary on this so far? Nope. Kevin says hi. Hi. Yay, people showing up. Good to have whoever shows up here. Um, other things when old wheat new. So are we talking specifically, um, oh, Flo says hi too. <laughs> are we talking specifically um, new technology for an old religion or any um, kind of old meets new? Any kind of old meets new here. So, well, what are some other examples of when old meets new? Um, and that's why I'm trying to think right now. Even though I didn't party, I'm still a little off. Old meets new. No, old, some sort, some old practices being revived, um, as well as when old meets new, the plethora of tarot decks you see today. All sorts of designs and styles. And tarot's been around for hundreds of years at the very least, and now you're seeing all sorts of, be it branded decks or different styles. I've seen some people who only read with the major arcana. I've seen people who read both major and minor together. Um, various tarot spreads. In, even in today's age, the uh, one of the most common tarot spreads still used is the Celtic tar uh, the Celtic spread, Celtic cross, which is um, basically the one you read up on on all in all the little booklets that come with tarot, which is uh, three cards in the center, one above, one below, and then four on the side, and usually one crossing the one in the center. You're starting to see some really cool ideas. Um, I've seen more oracle decks pop up in the past five to ten years than I can shake a stick at. Which is cool because it's really getting information through different channels. Be it tarot, runes, that's another thing I've been starting to see a lot of since I got into it. And the different styles of rune. Uh, got bone runes, stone runes, wood runes, 
different cl different classifications, uh, different styles based on uh, the region you're taking the writing from. And they're sort of being given a new twist. Or at least being revived. I've quite enjoyed reading runes in the past year. It's been a fun thing to learn. Well, what are some things that you found are different from what people would think of um, <clears throat> as like some of the old of runes with some of the new stuff for runes? Um, the differences between some of the old and the new stuff? Most people are familiar with the Futhark, which is the original, the traditional 24 runes. And now you're starting to see a lot more people look at other s systems of writing, um, as well as uh, the Nor include the Northumbrian runes, which are a set of nine runes, which are similar to some of the ones that are already in the rune set, but just have that slight different meaning. Aren't they just... Um, well, speaking of old versus new, the, the ones that, the, the Futhark that you called it, mm -hmm. um, aren't those like the, the original yeah. um, runes and then the, the nine extra runes are outgrowths from the Anglo-Phrygian? Anglo yeah, that is very true. Uh, you had the Elder Futhark and then the Anglo-Phrygian, it's sometimes called Northumbrian mm -hmm. or Futhork which was sort of this variation that spread out when the thank you Vikings for conquering all the other regions in, uh, in, uh, in Europe because it caused it to grow and sort of organically turn into all these different systems that had more runes in them. But there's and also the, the younger Futhark which has 16 runes. So it which has is less. less. So there's so many different systems. I think at some point, uh, you uh, thought you'd do a uh, rune group? Yep. should talk about the different groups of groupings of runes. Um, we actually, point. well, when we talk about, um, Ansu's a few weeks ago, we actually did discuss how Ansu's actually changed to a bunch of different runes. Um, and we'll be getting to those runes later. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I really need to stop by the rune group at some point. Yeah. This sort of little plug. Go watch the rune group at its new time. <laughs> but yeah. And now you see some people who are rediscovering these other systems and adapting it almost sort of playing mix and match and taking some of the stuff from the other systems and mixing it with the traditional flute art create whole new sets of runes. Like the witch runes? The witch runes are actually, if I recall correctly, they're a different system of writing. Yes. Which is based, it's not the Theban, because that's a system of, all in and of itself. So you've got all, all these different ideas that sort of branched off from the secret writing, this ancient writing and became their own either methods of divination. Um, speaking of divination, I've seen some very interesting forms of divination. Um, I've seen, I have a friend who does divination via cars. Basically the way she, certain cars will show up at certain points in her life in various colors and uh, they mean specific things. So she's figured out a system of divination by car, which I'm sure you wouldn't have had um, 100, 200 years ago, considering the automobile didn't exist. Which reminds me, I, had, I saw something today and I gotta ask her if it means, if it means anything. But besides coming up with new methods of divination, old methods are being rediscovered. Um, I have some friends who are dabbling in the, in Ogham, which is Celtic version of, of scratching on sticks. 
which are various markings and you throw them down and based on what they are it's very similar to the runes but it's a Celtic system I've also seen a resurgence of people sort of being aware of their environment so this may stem out of the environmental groups and sort of bled into the pagan community people becoming more aware of, of um, as part of their spirituality eating uh, being aware of what they're eating and where they're eating it because um, food has magical properties and sort of creating uh, magical meals, food magic, which uh, has been used since ancient times, but is only really starting to see a resurgence. Uh, there's this lovely lady, uh, Kuchina Arara, I believe it was, who does like dips and oils and spreads. Uh, to to attract wealth or um, uh, peace and happiness, to enhance psychic ability. It's a tasty way to do magic. Any comments in our chat room? Organic food rocks by float. Organic food does rock. Um, um, but I'd also say, if you're going to be doing food magic and looking, make sure to look at locally grown stuff or locally harvested stuff. Um, the supermarket is totally okay too, though. I, I know what it's like to eat on a budget. And that budget is, is, the, is this change you can scrape up and the flies that come out of your wallet. Don't eat those flies. They're not very tasty. That's another thing I've seen a lot of is learning how to do found magic or magic on a budget and not really going for the ornate tools, especially with the economic downturn. It's this idea of sometimes you don't always need the fancy bells and whistles to get things done. Um, You can use things you find outside. And I've probably been missing out on a lot of foxgloves lost and found as well. No. No? No. No I'm more? I'm doing that. Ah, we need more foxglove lost and found. Because that was fun. I've been seeing people do a lot more, just recently, old, what's old is new again. I've been seeing a lot of people do, starting to get into shadow work again, working with the darker elements of the self, um, and some of the darker side of things to sort of move forward. Working with totem animals like Phoenix, Phoenix has been very popular. And uh, also seen a resurgence of interest in the plant kingdom. I have seen at least two or three books recently that have been just about uh, working with plant spirits which is kind of awesome because plants are our friends too but I've seen I have a friend who's who's wants to we always called her the herbalist but uh, I know she'd like to get some formal training 
There are people who are working on old crafts like blacksmithing and connecting to deity through crafting and doing, and doing physical work. Again, it's a very old thing, but it's starting to see a resurgence in that. Any comments? Aw. Oh my guys. I'm all, well, almost entirely alone here. Um, we've got Flo saying, um, where there are witches, darkness follows. Do you think that's true? Hmm. I think darkness is inherent, well, every light is going to cast a shadow somewhere, is my belief. Um, it's just, it's not so much that where there are witches, darkness follows. I just believe people become slightly more aware of uh, what's going on, that people are starting to become aware of the, the darker aspects of themselves and learning to work with and harness this and, and either change it or, or grow with it. which is an important thing, in my opinion. So more along the lines of um, where you cast a light, you get a shadow, whether that light be the light of knowledge, and so therefore you find out kind of more the areas that you're ignorant. Yeah, exactly. And it, the one truth in the universe is you will never know everything. There will always be shadows, but you can always work to learn more, even if it's learning what you don't know. All right. Um, when you speak of witchcraft, do you refer to energy healers? Energy healers may be a part of, I can consider that a part of this as well. Um, Magic, as well as other things, involves energy and energy work. And magic is about intent at its base. Whether that's intent to heal or intent to create prosperity, intent to create growth or peace. So yeah, I can see energy healers as, as participating in this. But not exclusively just energy healers. Not exclusively energy healers. It's just like one section of a greater thing. <clears throat> so uh, we mentioned the secret circle here in the chat. Have you seen the secret circle? I have not seen the secret circle. Do you know the premise of the Secret Circle? That there is a, a group of young, I believe we talked about it on another one of our study groups, the Me and Get on the Modern Witch one, where there's a, uh, a group of young, young girls who are descend, who are, in uh, boys, who are in the, the hereditary witches, and they have to hide this for fear of their grandparents finding out who cursed their parents to not have magic powers anymore. If I recall correctly. Yeah. So would you say that um, the image of the witch is something new versus the old image of the witch? Hmm. Well, again, like, like most things, the old image is going to stick around. As much as we don't like it, it's going to stick around because there are people who grew up with it and who perpetrate that. But I believe the image of the witch is changing into something more positive, be it with uh, Secret Circle and Harry Potter, which are both much more positive images of witchcraft. Um, as opposed to, to the Wicked Witch of the West and the green-faced Halloween witch thereafter.
so. There's always room for growth and change. I don't say we're at, I don't think we're at a point where the fiction matches the reality. I don't think we will ever be exactly at that point. I think we're getting closer to, to the meeting point. Or at least somewhat closer to what the reality is. And it's nice to have that. Just thinking back to a couple of years ago when there was actually a whole political witchcraft debacle going on. And, um, a political candidate had had been discovered to have been a witch in the past and she was distancing herself from that. It was more along the lines of, of uh, black cats and voodoo dolls and, and it seemed much more satanic witchcraft. But the fact that it even popped up was interesting and in that she did her very best to distance herself from that, which created the counterpoint at the um, when we had some guests come here, uh, Lady Selena Fox, um, Oberon Zell Ravenheart. Uh, Lady Phaedra Bonowitz. There was a, a call uh, callback cry, which was I um, I'm a witch and I'm just like you. Sort of normalizing the image of the witch. That was pretty interesting. Pose to to the viewers and to anyone who might want to respond. Do you think witchcraft could ever be considered normal or mainstream? No, well, based on the idea that um, the Secret Circle has it, um, it and that's a, a mainstream non-cable television show. I think that it's it's well on its way. And it's a lot better. My question would then become: Is this? Would you say that this show would be doing a better job showing people what witches are than, for example, um, Charmed? Are we heading in the direction of, of a different kind of fictionalization of ourselves, but still mainstream, but as opposed to people really understanding what witches are? And that's an interesting point because I would actually have to sit down and watch Secret Circle and get an idea and then also review Charmed because I haven't seen that in forever. Probably throw some Buffy the Vampire Slayer while I'm at it. <laughs> get well, Buffy does a pretty good job though, I think. Because Willow started, Willow started out as being wicked, didn't she? I think so. Again, rewinding all the way back with all my Buffy friends that. And they have that magic shop and they actually talk about, you know, magical stuff that Wiccans would use. Mm -hmm. I know in Charm they actually go over some of the Wiccan terminology. I know in Charm they do go over some of the Wiccan terminology and I'm trying to think of other shows of, of that sort of general era. Um, the only other one I can think of was still sort of in the, in the fantasy uh, I dream of genie sort of realm, which was Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah, that would be yeah. silly. They had a closet that transported them places. Yeah, as I said, that's more. That felt more along the lines of an I dream of genie. <coughs> or bewitched. 
or be or bewitched. Um, we're starting to move away into into the realm of the plausible. Things that are more likely to happen. That is true, because in the secret circle they do do spells. Like they have herbs and stones and stuff like that. Who's interesting this here? I'm definitely going to have to check out secret circle sometime soon. Some of their spells are very silly though. They what? burst into flame. Mm. That's why they're silly, but oh. other than that. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of silly, but it's really also the fact that they were, media will always take artistic license to make something seem cooler. Example CSI, actually doing detective work like that is it's not as cool as it seems, nor is it as fast. Yep, you won't solve the case in under an hour. <laughs> If only the world worked like Hollywood <laughs> said it did. Uh, but yeah, no, your spells will not burst into flames and be awesome like that. But unless you set them on fire. Unless you set them on fire or use special s stuff to make it go in flames. That only works for written spells. But yeah, we're definitely moving forward as far as media goes, as far as the public perception of witchcraft, at least in this country. And that's where I gotta make a caveat. Witchcraft is still considered a very bad thing in a lot of countries. Especially in places like Africa. And it's really, we've come a long way, but we still got a long way to go. By this country, I mean the United States. And even here, there are still people who don't like it. But with things like the Pentacle Campaign, I mean, in just the past 10 years, things have changed drastically for the community. But, uh, you could have the Pentacle on your tombstone if you're a military vet. That you can feel much more able to openly express your faith is a huge step from where people were in in even the 80s and 90s. And I think we'll always have a long way to go. And there will always be something to learn and, and to um, always be people who don't understand and people who just haven't heard or haven't been given the opportunity to educate themselves. Because you can't really educate people for them. They have to choose to learn. And then I just was thinking about a few years ago on a, I believe it was on a Las Vegas Travel Channel special, 10, West, 10 Best Ways to Win in Vegas, and they brought up the idea of superstition. superstition. Um, they brought in uh, 
they brought in three ladies, gave them each a hundred dollars that they were to spend on video poker. They had a numerologist, a feng shui um, person, and uh, a priestess from the Fellowship of Isis. And they gave him an hour to play, and a whole, basically it was a test to see which of their sort of belief systems worked the best towards winning money in Vegas. I believe the feng shui artist got knocked out and lost the hundred dollars completely by the 45 minute mark. Um, and the numerologist lasted almost the full hour, but didn't quite make it. The priestess of the Fellowship of Isis made it the whole hour with cash to spare. Um, she had performed a ritual outside the casino beforehand, drawn a pentacle over the machine, and then afterwards thanked Isis for her bountiful gifts. Now, were they all equally skilled at poker, or did she just also have... Or was she also better at poker? No, they didn't. Um, I believe they were. I be believe they basically had all had the same skill level. They didn't say honestly. Not fair! Isis got the best <laughs> best player. Freak out! Uh. But yeah, it was, it was very interesting to sit there and watch that as someone who was very much a solitary at the time and go, tee hee, the witch came out on top. So. Still haven't seen a witch win the lottery yet. No, an out of the closet witch. Not an out of the closet witch, yeah. When that happens, that will be interesting. That will be a very interesting day. Do you watch True Blood? Apparently it has a witch in it too. Oh, there's a witch in True Blood? I know there's a ghost, a vampire, and a werewolf. A ghost? A ghost. I've only gotten past the first two episodes. Are we talking the American one, the American remake, or the British version? What? There's two? There's two! It was a British show, and then they made remade it for America. I stopped watching when they got to the episode of How Long Have You Considered Yourself to Be a Werewolf? Uh -oh. I stopped watching at that point, because that, that had a lot of personal issues. Not about werewolves, about, about other things. Right. No, yeah. we're talking the U.S. one. Oh, we're talking the U.S. one. No, I didn't know that there was a witch in the U.S. Uh, oh, True Blood. Yes. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what am I thinking? I'm thinking of, of uh, being human. Oh. Never mind, I'm on a completely different... All of the supernatural shows are blending together in my head. <laughs> Let's not get started on supernatural, which I haven't seen at all. But no, I don't actually watch True Blood, though I've been told I should. I just thought it was about vampires. It is about vampires. Being human, it has a ghost, a werewolf, and a vampire as roommates. As roommates? As roommates! That's awful. And it was based on a British show with the same premise. I'm pretty sure the British one was better. Usually it is. Yeah. <clears throat> That's why they haven't tried to bring and create an American version of Doctor Who. I don't think they let them. I think the Brits would hunt them down. Well, no, they had to get this. They had to get the rights. That's yeah. the thing, and I'm pretty sure that the BBC would not give up. Yeah, those rights. Those no. are those are sacred. Um. 
Yes, tangents, what are they? <laughs> but no, I didn't know that there was a witch in uh, True Blood. So, I think we're starting to wind down here. So, really, final thoughts tonight. Really, as far as when old meets new, we don't always have to throw out the old ideas. Um, some things can be adapted, some can be rediscovered and reused, um, and some are just, and some ideas can be proven outmoded and make way for new things. But the old stuff is what laid the groundwork for where we are today. So we should always give it a passing nod. So.